architecture? Uh, what's the status of it? What's happened in the last 12 months? Um, I'm going to do a quick overview of the progress, uh, and then I'm going to open it up to the floor for a discussion on how projects, distributions, etc., are dealing with ARM v7, um, issues that are encountered, um, things that you feel other distros could benefit from, uh, things that maybe ARM could benefit from. Um, I'm not saying we're perfect. We're close, but not quite perfect. Um, so, you know, it, it's all about getting dialogue going uh, and working together. So, the evolution has been fairly rapid over the last 12 months. Um, there's been quite a lot of work. Some of it's not overtly uh, visible, um, but uh, some of it's been more of code cleanup, etc. So the first one is kernel. Um, what's happened with the kernel? Biggest item really is unified kernel. Uh, this allows um, a single Z image to boot five different platforms. Um, it's still work in progress. We're trying to get more partners on board. Uh, one of our biggest issues is the uh, diversity of uh, kernels required to boot the large number of platforms that are available. It's not perfect, but we're getting there. And take three. Aha. Um, another item that's uh, being introduced, it's not quite upstream yet, but code's public under review, is support for M-Class uh, SOC. So the microcontrollers, uh, Arduino-style uh, devices. Uh, so that's slowly coming. Um, Another improvement, thanks to the likes of uh, the A7 and A15 uh, class, uh, the A class, is virtualization. Uh, with A7 and A15, we introduced uh, virtualization extensions uh, to bring it on par with other architectures. Um, and with that, both uh, major hypervisors can now run. Um, there's a debate, shall we say, over which one's more advanced, whether it be KVM or Zen. Uh, from our perspective, we just want them to work. Um, so we're not going to get involved in any uh, discussions of that nature. But um, again, things not quite 100% there. There's some issues around some of the tools, uh, trying to get them uh, updated so it supports uh, the hypervisor correctly. Uh, OpenSUSE are using KVM now on an A15 board as part of their build service, uh, so we know it does work uh, in the real world. Um, 
the A7 should work the same as the A15. Um, there's not a huge number of A7 baseboards out at the minute, so it's a little bit harder for real-world uh, stress testing. Then power. Uh, ARM's always been known about low power, uh, and we try and continue that. Uh, big one is big little. Um, so cluster of A15 cores with a cluster of A7 cores uh, working in tandem. Um, there's two schedulers for Big Little. Uh, there's what's known as IKS, in kernel switcher, is um, being used at the moment. Uh, with that, it's, it's more of a uh, CPU uh, governor uh, methodology. Uh, so it will if you have a low powered workload, it will schedule it on the lower CPU, so the A7. Uh, if you get more intensive usage, game or whatever, um, LibreOffice maybe, or something similar, it'll bring in the A15 when power's needed and then drop that out onto the A7 again. Uh, the other switcher available is the uh, MP switcher, multiprocessor switcher. Code is public, not quite upstream. Um, still needs a bit of a cleanup. Uh, that's more of a CPU scheduler, uh, so that will schedule the workload as required. And one of the key differences between IKS and MP, with IKS you can only use one of the CPU clusters at any one time. So either the A7 or the A15. With the MP scheduler, you can actually use both. Uh, so, uh, first devices that are shipping uh, later this year, uh, for instance, the Exynos 5 Octa. Um, I'm not 100% sure on which schedule. I've got a funny feeling that's going to be the IKS scheduler to start off with. Um, but with the MP scheduler, you'll be able to utilize all eight cores as required, uh, and the schedule will just assign the workload uh, as required to the CPU. Compilers, um, always needed. Uh, both LLVM and GCC uh, work. Uh, LLVM uh, supports A class only at the moment. Um, work is ongoing. Um, GCC supports all three uh, classes, A, R, and M. Um, so that's the most widely used uh, compiler at the moment. Um, the Enhancements to GCC uh, have been uh, fairly varied. Uh, there was quite a big focus on A15 and A7, uh, improving the pipeline there. Uh, A15, with those improvements, sees uh, performance uplift of upwards of 5%. Uh, so fairly significant. Um, There's also NEON support uh, within GCC. Um, NEON is uh, ARM's advanced SIMD um, processor extension. It's, uh, it helps with high performance audio and video uh, processing. Uh, that's all great, but how can you leverage it from a Linux perspective? Well. Project NE10 uh, was released by ARM, uh, an open source library uh, that uh, makes full use of NEON. Uh, it's BSD3 and Apache 2 licensed. Um, and it's available at projectne10.org. Uh, it's available now, and uh, its code's hosted on GitHub, so usual pull requests are more than welcome. Um, Next enhancement to uh, ARMv7 is Grub. Uh, we all use it, or most people use it nowadays, um, and work's begun, not quite upstream yet, but it's uh, under code review. And uh, Grub now uh, supports both 
U-boot and UEFI. Uh, so it you know just takes a system firmware, regardless of which one it is, and will boot from there. So moving from one architecture to another, you get the tools that you're used to. Um, again, it's still work in progress, but the, uh, the foundations are there, and it is working now. Lenaro has been around for about two years, just over two and a half years or so. Um, it's a great melting pot of mines for those that are interested in the arm space. The uh, couple of key RFC channels uh, and mailing lists uh, take note of. Uh, Haslanar is the main development RFC channel uh, where almost all the developers uh, loiter around, uh, discuss things. Uh, and Lenaro Enterprise is RFC channel that's focused around uh, ARM Linux in the enterprise space, so the traditional uh, server market where improvements are ongoing to get things up and running. Uh, the, they also host a cross-distro mailing list, um, which is at present very low traffic. Um, I'd love to see the traffic pick up there for people to actually discuss anything to do with ARM on their distro, whether you're Debian, Suza, Fedora, Arch, whoever, um, and to discuss issues that you're encountering, any bugs uh, that could be prevalent to, to other distros. They may have found a fix that you're not aware of, and it could be a quicker and easier way than trawling through uh, Bugzilla or any other bug tracker uh, trying to dig it out. Um, they also host three uh, conferences, Lunara Connect. Uh, they normally have one in Europe, one in Asia, and one in the States. Um, and almost all the developers from uh, members of Lunaro meet up there, discuss, plan, hack, uh, and generally uh, try and improve the way things are going now. Uh, there are, it is a charged for event, uh, but it is possible to uh, potentially get some sponsorship uh, if you're running short on, uh, on cash to, to attend. Uh, there's no guarantees, but you know, we, they'll try to, to help you along uh, how they can. So that's my slide where done. Uh, and it's now more of a, a, a discussion. Um, just curious as to who we've got from which distributions. I, I can see some people that I recognize. Um, so anybody from, sorry, question. Okay, so so those that didn't hear the question, um, gentleman in the corner there uh, is upstream maintainer for Grub, uh, and he's asking if the code could be committed upstream. Uh, my understanding is the code has gone through uh, review internally uh, to make sure everyone is happy that it works and how it works. Uh, my understanding is that it is being submitted upstream. Uh, I know the gentleman that uh, worked on that is actually here, so I shall grab him by the ear and make sure that he uh, does that uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah, no, that's that. I appreciate that, and uh, it it 
like I say, Arm has, uh, due to the nature of our business, uh, a fairly strict uh, regimen that needs to be followed for codes and missions. Uh, not just from a, a legal perspective, but also to make sure that our code is sane uh, and stable to be submitted upstream. Um, so I know it's gone through at least the first two stages. So the first stage is to, to get the code into your hands now uh, for your approval. Um, so I'll make sure that gets done. Yeah, no problem. I'll, like I said, I'll make sure that uh, the discussions happen uh, Monday at the very latest, if not sooner. Uh, maybe I can introduce you in person and you can go through exact details um, this weekend. But, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that that happens. Because it's in my interest, or shall I say, it's in our interest as well as yours to make sure that that code is upstream and merged. Uh, so everyone can benefit. Um, one of the questions I had was, does anybody, is there anybody here from Arch Linux at all? Dealing on their arm port? No. Uh, anybody from Fedora, or are you all at John Masters talk? No. Debian? Ah, good, good old Debian. And uh, Aunt Susa, yeah. uh, Gentoo, uh, let me see, Ubuntu, or are you all going under the Debian banner? Great. I mean, it, basically, it's has there been any major issues within your distros when supporting ARM? Uh, on V7 uh, that you've encountered. So, Yeah, I mean, for those that didn't hear the, the original question, the question is, is there any plans or what are the plans to unify uh, in 
installs from a OS perspective. So rather than just U boot, how how can you get the installer to work as it does now on x86, where you can choose components. Basically, you want to have parity on ARM as you do with x86, which ultimately is our goal. Uh, part of the issue is needing to get the silicon vendors to agree as well on that process. Um, ARM can make recommendations and requests, um, but that's not to say that a silicon vendor does their own thing because they know better. Um, I, I can't make any odd promises, um, but I'll make sure that we, we try and get that track going. It might be a good um, attack for Lenaro to take to try and as they have many of the silicon vendors that are working on not just consumer devices, but also enterprise devices. Um, it may be an easier form for their, you know, for them to actually get that sort of thing to work. Um, I'm not entirely sure if they're already working on it with the grub work that's going on, um, but I'll certainly try and uh, get something out that straw man's the, the ideal uh, track to take. Um, but it is it is a va very valid point, because uh, at the moment, if you want to install on an ARM device, it's effectively just DD your image. You don't get that granularity that you're used to on an x86 machine, um, which isn't ideal, uh, to say the least. But very valid. What do you say about the accelerated graphics browsers and the likelihood of some of those being installed for OS? Uh, question was, what can I say about accelerated graphics drivers uh, and if they'll be open? Um, no comment. Um, but <laughs> uh, it's it, graphics drivers on Linux are always a thorny. Uh, question. They're much better now on x86 than they used to be. Um, they're not perfect, um, but they are ahead at the moment of ARM in so much as you can get some open source accelerate graphics drivers. Um, there are discussions on how best to, to go about it. It's not very easy um, because there's a whole heap of IP involved. Um, there, there's the Lima project that's working on trying to uh, to create an open source graphics driver for the Mali 400 series. Um, but officially, I genuinely can't make any comment as it's something that I'm not really... Uh, able to for legal reasons in all honesty. Um, it's something that I'm working to try and rectify, but that's long term goal, you know, five, ten year type goal. Yeah, so Getting silicon vendors to to push for that may be um, the right tack to go around. Um, again, it's not something that I can say authoritatively on, um, but it's a well acknowledged issue uh, and shortcoming, um, and it's something that's going to take quite a bit of time to rectify. Any other questions from anybody? No. Nobody's got any issues with ARM. We are wonderful, working perfectly.
So the question is, how do I see trust zone integra integration in mainline kernel? Uh, for those that aren't aware, trust zone is a low-level secure layer um, that run on Cortex A-series uh, SOCs. Um, it's used predominantly uh, by financial institutions, banks, etc. For authorizations. Uh, it's also now being used for uh, media applications, so like say it, DRM uh, authentication uh, for playing back video files, etc. Um, I'm not entirely sure how um, Trust Zone is being looked at from general Linux perspective and how it can be uh, integrated into mainline. Um, there are discussions on how Trust Zone can be utilized within the general Linux space on, on server side uh, for authentication perspectives, so SH key type um, authentication. Um, it's still out there. I mean, do you have any opinions on how? Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, you kind of touched on one of the biggest issues there. Uh, the SOC disparity in uh, working along the same way for the same uh, goal. Um, Again, that's something that would need to be brought up in a, a forum where SOCs can actually agree. It may start to um, improve a bit now that Trustonic's been uh, created, uh, which is going to be dealing uh, a lot with uh, secure, uh, secure zone um, workloads, etc. So I can take that item back and, and see what the idea is and, and, and try and uh, make a mention of it and I can discuss with the Secure Zone guys um, on how best to, to integrate that in mainline. Um, but at the minute, I, I can't really say. Yeah, so what I think would be useful would be some sort of standard or guidelines from ARM which says these functions we expect to be offered by the secure layer and this is the API you have to use to actually use them. And maybe you could, I, mean, I guess there might be also from the security side services which are very common and have 
very have almost the same semantics across various implementations, but are, are of course, <laughs> again, not exactly standardized. Yeah, I think part of the issue may be the fact that because it's interfacing with secure zone, um, there is potentially the fear that, well, if we have this public API, then that means that we're opening uh, attack vectors into secure zone. That shouldn't be the case. I mean, if your secure implementation is correct, there shouldn't be a problem in publishing the API, right? Shouldn't, but <laughs> I'm I'm just playing devil's advocate here in, in so much as the, you know, the, the guys may go, well, you know, we don't like other people being able to snoop around or, or whatever, even interfacing. Um, it's called secure zone for a reason, uh, such like. I, I, all what I can promise is that I will go back to, to both the kernel teams and, and the secure zone teams and see what their views are uh, and see if we can get something uh, moving forward. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? How are we doing for time? Still got a bit of time. No. Sorry. Sorry, I'll, I'll repeat the question. That will integrate our course. Right. Sorry, can you just repeat the question now that you've got the microphone? PGA? FPGA. Oh, FPGA vendors. Um, so what FPGA products may be coming out, I, I have no comment uh, on that in so much as ARM don't actually manufacture anything. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, so you would need to go, yeah, uh, you know, we, we license the the architecture design, and then vendors like uh, Samsung, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, etc. they then take that design and build up on it um, and build products from that. So you would, you would really need to, to speak to the hardware vendors to try and find out what their product roadmaps are. Um, I mean, personally, I find out what products are shipping almost the same time as most of you guys will find out from whether it be The Verge, Engadget, whatever, you know, usual online sources. Um, so it's it's not something that I can really say. It, it is really down to hardware vendors on what they plan on doing. Um, so, the, you know, the, there are, V7 is going to be around for a while, um, and there are new products coming out um, based on the architecture. Um, so, I mean, the next big product is going to be Big Little. So Samsung's uh, Exynos 5 Octa is the first announced product. Um, there are going to be more, I'm assured. So um, Big Little is different to NVIDIA's implementation where they have uh, quad-core plus one so with the Tegra 3, you've got a uh, much lower powered uh, helper core that's used at boot up. Um, once the system's up and running, it then hands off to the, the quad core for running applications, etc. cetera. Um, so that's, that's the next big one. It works slightly different, but basically the boot doesn't actually happen on the low power core. The boot happens on the on the small ARM7 we also use for co-processing stuff for video decoding, and then that one boots the normal cluster, and then we sw and then depending on the load, we switch back to the low power core. Yeah, I mean it's 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 big little esque, but not quite. Um. Uh, the major difference between what Tegra does and what big little does is that it's not cache coherent so we can't and also we can't run 
all cores at the same time like you can in Big Little. Let's mix it. That's actually the major difference. And it's also not symmetric. Yeah. And a not sim but a met not symmetric thing is something which you can, of course, also do in Big Little. Big Little doesn't have to be symmetric. It just has a first implementation apparently will be symmetric. Yeah. But there is no requirement for it to, yeah, there is no requirement for it to be symmetric. No. Quite correct. 